you know, once again, we are seeing America muck up mental illness and it's always done to someone in the black community, even a black immigrant, it doesn't matter because at the end of the day, they look at all of us the same. So now you have, and I had to go look up this man's name because I kept seeing it spelled two different ways. In the media, they have his name spelled Ervo. It's not Ervo, it's Ivor, I-V-O-R. And I'm going to show you a video where they attempt to fix it along the way, but the wrong name is still up on the screen. So we got someone that was suffering from mental illness. And we see, just like in Tyree Nichols, we see deputies involved. The stories they tell don't match the video. They claim he was combative, but they said he was not combative at all on the video. You know, it, it's the same song and dance every single time. And we got a people, a very sick and demented people that are running this place. They believe in poking their chest out and they want you to know they're in charge. But when it comes down to fixing things, they get a complete F. They don't fix the school shootings. They don't fix mass incarceration. They don't fix how mentally ill people are treated by law enforcement. They know these problems exist. It's not about fixing things. It's about letting everybody know you're in charge. That's all they're concerned about. That and money and racism. Other than that, as far as fixing anything that's wrong in the society, they could care less about it. This is why it just stays out here and it festers and it never gets better. Look at all the police shootings. Do you see policing getting better? These folks don't believe in fixing a darn thing. They just want to continue to benefit from the sickness that's going on out here. They don't fix it because they're benefiting from it. If you benefit from it, then no matter how heinous it is, why would you fix it? And you got to understand why our Heavenly Father must bring this place down and must kick these people out that are in power. It must occur. Or otherwise, it's not going to be anything left. This society is in bad shape and there's no attempt to fix it, none. And at this point, we know it can't be reformed. You can't retrain, you can't reorganize. It is doomed and it can't be fixed. It's unredeemable. So my prayers go out to his family I know how hard they are struggling with this. We have seen mentally ill people get killed a multitude of times in America. Uh, Y'all remember the story I did last year where they arrested a mentally ill black woman who was having an episode. Her father called the police and she dies from falling out of a police vehicle. You know, these are the things that just keep occurring over and over and over. And just know when this is all said and done, nothing, absolutely nothing is going to change. It is not in these people to change. That's why you will never see it. You're going to keep hearing about these heinous stories all year round. And there will be no attempt to improve things because it's not about improving things. They got to be in charge. They got to be in charge. So let me go ahead and play this video and I'll be right back. 
Schultz mentioned in today's press conference, attorney uh, Ben Crump mentioned that OTNL was experiencing a mental health crisis and simply needed help. And today that has many, including a Virginia senator, wondering what unfolded exactly. So with more on policing practices surrounded uh, when it comes to mental health in Virginia, we do have Desiree Montilla on your side tonight at 6. And Desi, uh, what's being done to address this? Well, I spoke with Senator Credeeds McKee, and he's looking more into this. And authorities claim that Otiano became combative with deputies during the intake process. But according to attorney Ben Crump and the family, the video they watched, he was shackled and didn't appear to be a threat to anyone. And all he needed was help. There are more questions than answers that we have. The search for answers continues into the death of Ivo Otieno. This was a mental health crisis. Attorney Ben Crump, who is representing the Otieno family, says Ivo was going through a mental health episode and needed help. On March 3rd, Henrico Police say Otieno was placed under emergency custody order and members of the crisis intervention team were on scene. From there, Otieno was taken to Parham Doctors Hospital, where police claim he started becoming physically assaultive towards officers. His mother, even when they came on that Friday, she told them about his mental health and that she believes he was having a crisis. Otieno was taken to Henrico Jail. Three days later, Otieno died during his intake process at Central State Hospital, where investigators were told he became combative and was restrained. But the Dinwiddie prosecutor says Ivo was handcuffed and kept face down on the ground where he was smothered. I cannot imagine a reason for transporting uh, a person in mental ill crisis who is required to be properly restrained, but having seven people. NBC 12 safety expert Mike Jones has extensive knowledge in law enforcement and says one of the questions is what type of training these deputies had. Whenever something like this happens, you just want to try to find out as much as you can. Senator Creed Deeds, an advocate for mental health resources in Virginia, believes Otiano's story spotlights a need for more training. I don't know what their training was. I, I don't know whether any of them had crisis intervention training or any or, or any portion of them had crisis intervention training, but it certainly shores up for me, confirms for me that we need to make sure that, that more officers get that training. So it's a question all of us are asking. What training, if any, did these deputies have when it comes to mental health? I reached out to the Henrico Sheriff's Office this afternoon to ask them, but I'm still waiting to hear a response from them. But, Makia, we're going to continue to dig deeper into this as we learn more um, information about this case. Certainly. Thank you so much, Desi. I know you'll stay on top of it. And as Otiano's mother said earlier, a mental illness should not be a ticket to death. Thank you so much for your coverage. And Okay, ladies and gentlemen, so seven deputies have been charged with murder in the death of Ivor Otiano. So this happened out of Dinwiddie, Virginia. And this was a man that was going through a mental health crisis. He was handcuffed and shackled and pinned down to the ground by seven deputies. And now those deputies, and some of them, were um, from the black community, whether we want to hear it or not, is just like Tyree Nichols, they are charged with second degree murder. And his relatives, of course, they got Ben Crump and they viewed the footage. Three people employed by the hospital have also been charged of where he went. I mean, this is crazy that you're talking 10 people and out of 10 people, nobody could do the right thing. Nobody. Wow. So they had a news conference shortly after watching the video that the local prosecutor had and the family and attorneys condemned the brutal treatment of Ervo Otieno, who was only 28 years old. And he was subjected to first at the local jail and then at the state hospital where authorities said he died. And this occurred on March 6th during the admission process. I mean, yeah, everybody involved need to go to jail. 
just like in Tyree Nichols' case, everyone involved need to go to jail, including Preston Hemphill. His butt needs to go to jail too. So anyway, this is absolutely heartbreaking and it's just another disturbing and traumatic story that we have to listen to. So him, one man handcuffed and shackled was piled on by seven men. <sighs> Otieno's case marks the latest sample of black men in custody death that has law enforcement under scrutiny. Law enforcement, I, these people don't enforce the law. When they're dealing with us, they terrorize and kill, but they don't enforce no law. And the kind of people that they constantly kill, that's not keeping the community safe. They're killing people that are not a threat to the community. This man needed help. He didn't need to be tortured and killed. He needed help. And, you know, this society don't believe in helping a black man or woman that's having a mental health crisis. Let's call it what it is. We've seen this way too many times when it's one of them. OK, we need to help them. But when it's one of us, they don't feel no need to help at all. That's why they don't watch the actions. Don't listen to the words. The words are hollow. So, mm, mm, mm. and they're saying in the video, you can see they're putting their back into it. Every part of his body was being pushed down with absolute brutality. 10 people so far have been charged with second degree murder and Otiano's death. Seven Henneco County Sheriff deputies were charged Tuesday and additional charges were announced Thursday against three people who were employed by the hospital. Footage the family watched Thursday has not been publicly released, but Dinwiddie County Commonwealth Attorney and Cable uh, Bakerville also described in court Wednesday saying that the first hearing for the deputies that Otiano was smothered to death, local news outlets reported. This is absolutely crazy. So she announced Thursday in a, a news release additional charges against the hospital employees. Darian M. Blackwell, 23, from Petersburg, Wavy L. Jones, 34, from Chesterfield, and Sedarius D. Williams, 27, of North Dinwiddie. They are being held without bond. And it wasn't immediately clear if they had attorneys that could speak on their behalf. A spokeswoman for the state police said she didn't know if they had obtained counsel. None were listed in the court records. The news release didn't say what role they allegedly had in Otiano's death. But in order for them to be charged, it tells me they did absolutely nothing to help this man that was in need of mental health help. But by the time those sheriff deputies piled on him, I'm sure he needed some physical help too. You know, how many times are we going to continue to see this? And un unfortunately, the answer is until these people are out of power. They will handle everything in the same dusty ass way that we have seen all this time. It's not handling at all, as far as I'm concerned. You know, so... Anyway, y'all, I will keep you posted on this story. This is a shame, but it just goes to show, and I've said this before, if you are a black immigrant 
and you are thinking about coming to America to work and live, find another place to go. America is exceptionally dangerous. It is not safe in America. It is not no American dream. It's not no apple pie and all that stuff they've been trying to sell the world. It is deadly. It is dangerous. It's racist. It is one of these places where you got the most uncaring people on the face of the earth running it and things don't get done. If you want to come to a place where nothing gets done, then you come to America because America will give you plenty of that, but no solutions. Please leave your comment and subscribe. Don't forget to hit on the notification bell and I'll see you on the next video. Peace, family.